Hello and welcome to Triumph Women Beating the Odds. My name is Okello Sharon Nagenjoa. Here we tell you the stories of women who have overcome adversity in their lives. Name it. Social life, political life, business, careers. Now guess what? Today's topic is a little bit different. We will be delving into the topic of managing your career and social life while dealing with bipolar. And this, we'll be mirroring through the story of Barbara Joyce Abami. Barbara Joyce Abang is a principal state attorney in the Ministry of Justice. In her book, Barbara fearlessly confronts the issue of mental health with grace, wisdom and vulnerability. Through her journey with bipolar disorder, she provides a raw and honest account of the struggles and stigma associated with mental health illness and her triumph with living with bipolar disorder. This is her story. Oh, hi, Barbara. Hi. Thank oh. you for having me. Wow. It's like an amazing moment for me. Yeah. <laughs> First of many experiences. Okay. Mm. Okay. <laughs> Be kind to your mind. An amazing read. Thank you. The particular topic in this book mm. is one that is both sensitive, mm. but also needs more awareness. Yes. Because we, if we are talking bipolar disorder mm. that is one that very many people want to shy away from mm. so just before you get into it mm. give us a brief introduction about yourself oh i i'm a lawyer i work for ministry of justice and constitutional affairs i have worked there for 17 years 17 yes. years yes after i left law school mm. in 2005 without declaring my age <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 2005, immediately I just joined government. Oh, wow. Yes. Okay. Mm. So what inspires Be Kind to Your Mind, mm. Barbara? Um, it comes from a story my mom always told me. Um, Be Kind to Mind is talking about really mental health challenges and bipolar, but mm. I have more than that. Like you can see, I have a lazy eye, which generally means I was in th at three months, mm. I my eyes drooped. I had I was they gave birth to me perfect big eyes. I beg your pardon. I, they gave birth to me perfect big eyes. Okay. So at three months, um, my mom just noticed you know this child's eyes are drooping. Mm. So she goes back to the hospital. They do something interesting and it's okay. Then again at like three years old, they droop again. They drop again. They drop again. Both of them? Because I see they, one both of them. Of them yes. Okay. Both of them at that time. And so it's an autoimmune condition called Mycena gravis. It's ocular. Mm. I must say, God, mercy. Mm. It's ocular. Because if um, it was the whole body, yeah. it would mean I'll be unable to do anything. Yeah. Because it affects the muscles. Okay. So it affects the muscles of the eyes. My mm. eyes can't move like you. Mm. So you find I have to lift my head and things like that mm. and um, yes sometimes I'm lucky that this eye just comes up and it's okay and then this one usually is like the lazy eye it doesn't come up um, so I grew up with this and um, I have been a sickly child practically I was born with sickle cell carrier mm. I have been really sickly in and out of hospital throughout my life. Mm. One of the most dramatic ones was in, in uh, 86, the, during the war, and I got sick. <laughs> yeah. And my mom had to make a decision mm. to take me to hospital, Molago Hospital. We would live, we lived in Nakasero, mm. near the Italian embassy mm. now. And so she had to put me on her back mm. and carry me over dead bodies. To take me to Mulago. Over dead bodies. Yes, Mulago, jumping okay. dead bodies in the mm. 86th war. Mm. Um, to take me to Mulago. And she gets there and there are no doctors. It's every, and she's mm. bleeding with her. My child is sick. And that was sickle cells? That was malaria. Okay. Like, um, because so many things, autoimmune condition is when your body fights it, yeah. it starts fighting itself. Any, anything can yes, just attack Yes, yes. So, you. of okay. course, um, your immunity is low, low. Because your antibodies are, are crazy. Like mm. I say, 
Mm. Why are you crazy? Why are you attacking normal things? Mm. You see? So, um, as a result, um, I've been in and out of hospital. So, like I was telling someone that this is just um, among some very few issues yeah. I, have, I'm, I deal with. Yeah. I deal with a lot. I actually say my life is a life of faith. Wow. Yeah. It's it's a life of miracle and a mercy. It's course. amazing. You know, we, mm. we here we celebrate mm. your triumph. We celebrate mm. every little triumph. We believe mm. that even even the smallest triumph, mm. the mere fact that you're alive mm. is a reason for celebration. Yes, it is. So now that we are discussing bipolar, mm. bipolar is one of those 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 um mm. I wouldn't want to call it this disease, it's a disorder. Yes. Yeah. Mm. That many people are, are, are suffering from yes but then they do not accept it like mm. you, it's even hard to just go to hospital and say i need i need to to check mm. to check for di bipolar yes. and even the, the 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 characteristics the signs of bipolar mm. are, are often ignored mm. how do you arrive at this diagnosis um for me i think i I, I didn't really have a choice and it's very hard even for family members who have even dealt with people with mental challenges mm. to accept mental health challenges because there's a lot of stigma. There's a lot of stigma. Even the family is scared to get help. Mm. So even the family is in denial. So they can see all the symptoms mm. but they are in denial. Like they, they don't want to accept that this person has a mental health condition. Mm. Like my dad, when he had um, cancer, lung cancer, and he was sick it, and terminal ill, and I mm. knew he may not live. Yeah. He's my best friend. Like if you read the book, he's my best friend. Mm. My dad was my best friend. It was a very beautiful relationship. Yeah. Like everybody would call me his walking stick. Wherever he was, I'm, yeah. right behind him, I'm there. Yeah. So, to know that my best friend is dying was so painful. So when he was going through the whole process of chemotherapy, losing his hair, losing weight, a very strong man, he was very, very strong. Um, despite the fact that he got an accident and lost his arm. Mm. So he was also he was disabled, yeah. but he never stood under disability. He stood full, Oyam South MP. <laughs> Uh, he did his job in UNDP. He was an engineer, lived there, took care of himself. Yeah. I knew he was a man who would cook. When my mom is sick, he would cook. Mm. You know, he would cook, he would clean with his one arm. Mm. Um, his aunt even taught me how to drive. Mm. So because they taught me how to drive, people wonder, hey, why are you driving with one arm? Yes. <laughs> Like, oh yeah, I forget because his son taught me how to Because drive. a man that had no arm uh, taught me how to drive. Yes, yeah, so I had, had one arm, so yeah. I, I just I can drive with one. So yeah. I can multitask. Yeah. I'm doing this. And my ex be like, get off the phone. I'm mm. like, I can multitask. Mm. This arm can just be here yeah. talking to you and I would just yeah, drive. drive in. Yeah. So um So you're trying to say that losing him mm. is what drove you to be bipolar. Yes. Even when he had cancer, I was already sick. What was the, what is the incident that drove you for the checkup? Um, I my my family was worried because they knew we were really close. Yeah. And so when he died, they kept on saying I was lost. I was like the shell of myself. Mm. So they're like, oh, you know, families will say, let's collect money, let's forget about um, this year's rent, and mm. so send that to university in Birmingham. Mm. I was lucky. Also, they. Um, Ministry of Justice, my then boss, mm. uh, Justice Kainamura, mm. was also like, no, we can also help out. We can mm. give you a half scholarship. Yes. So the ministry gave me a half scholarship, plus this, I went to University of Birmingham to do mm. my master's. While there, I had hypothyroidism as well, as a result of grieving my dad. Yeah. So my body was just going it was just going a work. It's like, yes. what's going on? <laughs> you know? So I didn't know that winter is so bad for hypothyroidism and then because we are blacks we're so used to the sun which yes. is the vitamin d mm. which we get naturally now you're in england there's <laughs> hardly sun in england mm. and then it's winter so i think my body just went away i started getting emotional i was paranoid um then my colleague 
who had gone with me to Birmingham from the office. Um, I started acting really weird. Like, I'll just start funny fights, get weird. And then I started, yes, fights out, uh, of the out of the blue. I was really weird and paranoid. And then I started hearing voices. That's yeah. when I was like, red flag. Mm. I just went on my computer. Like hearing voices in your head? Yeah, hearing voices like telling in your you head. Things telling you things that you Yes. You start hearing voices, like proper voices. Yeah. You know, do this, do that, do this. You get like other you, people. You're like running. Uh huh. Bazaar. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll no, it's okay. <laughs> like, like you, you, you have two people. Yeah. Who, like you have your own inside conference. <laughs> wow. We'll get to that after <laughs> yes. after this break. Mm. Bipolar is one disease that uh, one this disorder mm. that many people tend to ignore. We all have those those moments where we are angry for no reason. We have emotions running in, but then there are moments when they are overboard. Mm. So have you thought to check whether you are fine or maybe you have some symptoms of bipolar? So do not ignore some symptoms, noises in your head, voices in your head, conferences in your head, like just like <laughs> just like Barbara says, because we all go through certain situations and we tend to ignore them. So if that is you, please go check up. Mental health is not something to be ashamed of. Mm. We'll be right back after this break. Welcome back. For those who have just joined us, my name is Okello Sharon Nagendwa, and I'm still here with Barbara Joyce Abang, who is telling us her journey and her struggles with mental health, specifically bipolar, and how she has been able to maneuver and also produce and write a book, Be Kind to Your Mind, which she brings to just create more awareness about this particular disorder that many people tend to ignore. So if you are struggling mentally, if you have a friend, sister that is struggling mentally, remember that you can triumph over whatever adversity, whether health, business, or social life. So Barbara, mm. Back to back to your diagnosis. So you're struggling with voices in your head, mm. conference in your head, mm. you're quarreling and yes. hey. I'm in this. <laughs> <laughs> Lost uh, so many friendships. Very good people, by the way. You did? Yeah. Tell this. me, could you would you would you mind giving me just a a, a snippet of it? Um this is a very good woman from um one of the Russia she's from Russia. Yeah. And this is, is, it, this is I can't pronounce one of the Russian colonies. Yeah. And she was she was really a very good woman. But you know with paranoia it just speaks its victim. Yes. So you start thinking that she's gonna hurt you and it creates narratives and all these things. So I mean she just couldn't stand it. Mm. So she moved to another hall. And even my relationship with this person from Uganda. Understand what? Would you would Yeah you like, like it, because you're really difficult. Do you, you you are accusing people of things they just don't know what's going on. You're accusing people uh, of things they have not done. Done, and you are very... Because you've created a narrative. It's paranoia. Mm. So how does it work? You create a narrative in your mind, mm. then you just come at it. Yes. And you're scared. You're scared. This person is going to harm me. That's paranoia. And you, do you feel like you feel like it's real? It's real. It's a true narrative in your head. Then you create a story around it. Yes. That's paranoia. Okay. And it's very difficult to live with. So moving forward. So um, she left. Um, even my relationship with this person, it has never recovered since. Um, it is hard. Uh, so I went to London. I was admitted, they came, quickly diagnosed me, I was admitted in a psychic ward, and then they came with a diagnosis, mm. of bipolar disorder. And all I'm thinking then is, am I going to finish my master's? Yeah. The thing with bipolar is it's not like schizophrenia. You are aware of your environment, you get. Mm. You know what's going on, but you just can't control it. And that's why it's so painful. Mm. Because you see all this, things that you're doing that is weird and you can't control it mm. and you have to live with that memory after how have you dealt with it in say your romantic relationship it's been challenging 
Actually, not just romantic. All relationships are challenging for people with mental health challenges. It's challenging for the person. It's also challenging for those that choose to love them. That's what I say in this book. Mm -hmm. It's very challenging. So you admitted when you start the treatment? The treatment, yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, so the school writes and they're like, they want to give me what they call this uh, an extended year. Okay. I was like, you're joking. Mm. I was staying in London anymore. Yeah. Ah, I went back to school. Yes. You <laughs> left the hospital. After I was done, went back to school. Mm. And I was my, my family wanted me to come back for Christmas. I'm like, no, I'm mm. doing my assignments. Yeah. I was you were never about to no, give up. Ah, no. I went back, I finished. I may not have reached the mark that I wanted, mm. but at least I got the pass mark and I got my, my, my degree. And immediately I was quick to leave England. I'm mm. like, this place is so depressing. <laughs> <laughs> you wanted to be I'm like, I'm <laughs> out of this place. So how do we, just to another person out mm. there who, mm. who could be going through exactly mm what you're going through and they have no idea mm. but but they are relating mm. with the symptoms that you're talking about mm. how would they be able how, how can they deal with that um i would feel if you're getting these symptoms just go to hospital because many people are not go on the internet mm. and then you get all these bipolar symptoms and you tick 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 yeah. but the thing with bipolar is that almost everyone gets anxious yes. almost everyone at certain level in time gets paranoid yes you get mm. so go to hospital mm. if you're getting these symptoms you're getting very excessive emotional yes. situations mm. then you even look back you're like i really didn't have to react this that way, way. Mm. you know you are very anxious and actually not no more anxious but you start getting chest tightening yes you know you feel like it's just it's tightening like you can't breathe yes. yes and then you start hearing voices yes. some of them make people suicidal luckily for me it's not told me that mm. but some people get suicidal like it tells you go on that balcony and jump and, um, mm. wow see. wow barbara be kind to your mind if you've not gotten this book Barbara where can we get this book um currently it's not in the stores but now it's on Amazon yeah you can get it on Amazon okay um but we are having a book launch um on Friday mm. in Caramel uh the books will the be debt. there that is tomorrow that's oh. the 12th Friday okay um from seven okay of course, we so have a limited. Airs, yes, mm. it would have happened the day before. Yes. Yes. So okay. um, that's when the books will be available. Okay. I'm hoping to print more for the bookstores. Mm. I'm looking at Aristo. Yeah. I'm so in other words, as of today, mm. uh, Saturday, this book is available on all the stores, right? Not yet. Not yet. Uh, okay. It's on Amazon, okay. but I hope to go to the various stores yeah. and meet with them. Okay. Because I was dealing with it in phases. phases i'm a very phased person okay mm. okay mm. so just be kind to your mind mm. we all have a breaking point every human being has a breaking point mm. but sometimes our breaking point goes overboard mm. and we never know if it is no more or abnormal mm. so it's important to just go have a, a checkup mm. see if your, your level of anxiety mm -hmm. and depression has exceeded its limit. Mm -hmm. And if it has, please don't shy away from, from getting treatment. And of course, talk to your family and friends mm -hmm. because these conditions can affect your relationship with people. Talk mm -hmm. to them and tell them, you know what, I'm not at the best mental health mm -hmm. state at the moment, but mm -hmm. I need your support. So when I have an outburst, yeah. when I'm emotional, please get to understand me. I am trying to find help, in other words. so that everybody else, family, friends, can be able to give you a shield to mm. lean on, a, a shoulder to lean on, just in case you're having those outbursts. Because guess what? You cannot do this alone. Because mm. when you're alone, they struggle. But when you're with people, that is yes, what God support. has designed. Mm. That we are not here on the earth for ourselves, mm. but we are here for everybody else. Mm. Don't forget to follow us on our social media, at Girl from Oyam and at Triumph Women UG. And let's take this conversation online. Mm. Until next Saturday, ciao.